I'd like to introduce uh, Andres and then uh, Juliet uh, after, after that. So Andres is an independent investigator, uh, has a bachelor in education and master uh, in interdisciplinary studies uh, on, on Latin America, the Caribbean and Cuba from the University of Havana. And he's uh, a member of a number of societies, for example, the Transdisciplinary Chair of Historical Studies of uh, Cuban Freemasonry, and also the Center for Studies on Western Terrorism of the Union of South American Nations. So, but as, as I said, unfortunately, he can't be here, but Juliet has been so kind to, uh, to, to read his, uh, his paper. And Juliet has a degree in psychology and is a co-editor of the, the Lucifer Collection, which is being published now. And the Lucifer Collection is a uh, is, is re reprinting Blavatsky's um, uh, material and, and um, from the journal Lucifer, but also um, in a very uh, research oriented way, so that actually it is divided into research categories with specific topics and themes, which makes it much much more uh, approachable and, and useful. I think so. Uh, thank you, Juliet, for for reading uh, Andrea's paper, and the word is yours. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon, my name is Andres Rivero Aponte. I am a historian and I'm going to talk to you about the Cuban Theosophical Movement and its repercussions in Central America and the Caribbean. In this presentation is exposed the result of my master's thesis in history presented at the University of Havana in July 2020. Because traditional Cuban historiography has ignored the importance and significance of Blavatsky's theosophy on the island, the research project that arises from the completion of the aforementioned thesis presents a first approach to the process of introduction, consolidation, and institutionalization of theosophy in Cuba. At the same time, the referential role played by the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society is examined in the articulation of the theosophical, esoteric, and intellectual networks that were formed in Central America, the Caribbean and a large part of South America in the first decades of the 20th century. Before entering the subject, I will briefly talk to you about the documentary sources that, my, that support my research. The sources were collected in a variety of public and private archives, among which are the archive of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society, which has documentation dating back to 1901 and includes all the lodges belonging to the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society since its foundation in 1905 up to now. In this archive are valuable manuscripts, graphic testimonies and minute books, lists of members, personal files, institutional and private correspondence, and constitutive letters among other valuable documents for adequate historical reconstruction. The personal archive of Barbara A. Farinas is located jointly, which belongs to one of the families of theosophical tradition in Cuba that make up the nucleus of the Cuban theosophical remnant. She also served as president of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society between 2012 and 2019. The personal archive of Barbara A. Farinas includes amounts of information related to the historical evolution of the Cuban Theosophical Society, its organizational process, and the various social causes that Cuban theosophists championed in the first decades of the 20th century. Another storage center for documentary sources is the National Archive of Cuba, where there are several files in the Registry of Associations Fund, mostly belonging to Cuban theosophical lodges. In addition to all this documentary accumulation, there were used the Theosophical magazines contained in the popular library H.P. Blavatsky of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society and in the Jose Marti National Library of Cuba. These magazines were very valuable materials when establishing the socializing spaces for exchange, circulation and feedback of the ideas proposed by Theosophy. There are also sources like very useful documentaries for the study of the formation of theosophical and esoteric networks in the region. In order to facilitate the understanding of the development of the Cuban theosophical movement and its repercussions in the region, it is intended in this presentation to delimit two sub periods. 
The first was defined between 1894 and 1904. In this first stage, Theosophy was introduced in Cuba, and later the first groups and the first Theosophical Lodges were organized. We will call this stage the pre-sectional stage, mainly because it predates the founding of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society. A second stage between 1905 and 1926 is a period in which it is possible to give an institutional framework to Theosophy, combining this fact with the founding of the Cuban section in 1905 and the subsequent development and consolidation of the regional theosophical movement. We will call this stage the sectional stage because the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society and the Cuban theosophists for the most part will become the fundamental protagonists of the development of the Theosophical Society in Central America, the Caribbean and much of South America turning Havana into the theosophical capital of the region. Introduction of the teachings of Theosophy in Cuba, 1894 to 1904. Theosophy spreads in Latin America at the end of the 19th century under the influence of several European theosophists. The first theosophical branch to be founded in Latin America was the Lutz branch founded on January 7, 1893 in the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina thus opening the Latin American region to Theosophical associations. Theosophy arrived in Cuba in its institutional form in 1894 by influence of the Spanish military José Jiménez Serrano, member of the group of Theosophists of Madrid. After the arrival of José Jiménez Serrano to the island, the Theosophical meetings promoted by the Spanish Theosophist began to become popular in the city of Sancti Spiritus. These meetings in the city of Sancti Spiritus were the germ of theosophy studies in Cuba. As a result of this work at the end of 1894, the Sancti Spiritus Theosophical Association was founded. Its small membership was made up of people belonging to the professional intelligentsia of the time with a high level of education mostly doctors, teachers, soldiers, and lawyers, highlighting as main figures, the Spanish military, José Jiménez Serrano, the language teacher, Manuel Yane Román, and Dr. Ramón Rogina Carbonell, among others. This first group of theosophical students was organized until they established connections with the great regional theosophical centers, managing to formalize a theosophical lodge in Cuba attached to the American section of the Theosophical Society. But the outbreak of the Cuban War of Independence on February 24th, 1895, prevented the founding of a Theosophical Lodge at this early date. In addition, the tense political, social and economic situation that the island was experiencing at that time led to the dissolution and dispersal of the first Theosophical Study Group in Cuba. Although the dispersion of the Theosophical Association of Sancti Spiritus did not prevent the individual work of most of its prominent members. With the end of the Spanish Cuban North American War in 1898, many emigrants returned to the country. Among these were the former members of the Sancti Spiritus Theosophical Group, which once in the country reactivated their informative work, beginning to reorganize an incipient group of Theosophical Studies. These renewed activities led to the meeting of Miguel R. Munoz Forval and Ramon Rogina Carbonell, who managed to interest several people with their theosophical talks, bringing together a group of nine people. Among those who stood out were Jose Maria Mazo Juncosa and Guillermo Paez John Gonzalez. So a study group was organized that had its headquarters in the Cuban capital. This fact is reflected in the Spanish theosophical magazine, Sofia, of February 1900, where a news item appears of the formation of a group of theosophy students who are articulating a theosophical branch in Havana dated January 23, 1900. This early reorganization and the informative work of the various groups of theosophists facilitated the founding of the first Cuban theosophical lodges and their legal seat, between 1900 and 1904. The first lodge founded in Cuba was the Annie Besant Lodge of Havana, 
which was provisionally formed under the protection of the Theosophists of Madrid, as recorded in the provisional charter issued on August 23, 1900 by the Theosophical branch of Madrid. The Annie Besant Lodge was legalized before the government authorities on January 20th, 1901. Later, it obtained its definitive charter on May 17th, 1902 from the American section of the Theosophical Society. The founding of the Annie Besant Lodge was followed by the founding of the first five national lodges that would make up the group that contributed to the establishment of the institution in Cuba. A momentous event at this time was the visit of Henry Steele Olcott, president founder of the Theosophical Society to the Cuban capital. Olcott arrived in Havana in September 1903. His stay of almost a month on the island was a determining factor that facilitated the establishment of new lodges and the growth of membership, acting as a catalyst to give the institution more social visibility in Cuba. Among the motivations that led Olcott to visit the island stand out the willingness to collect a large inheritance that had been donated to the International Theosophical Society by a small Havana merchant and faithful theosophist, Salvador Romero de la Fuente. In gratitude for Romero de la Fuente's altruistic act of donating his assets to the institution, a monument was erected in the Colón Necropolis in 1905. Also, his name was placed in large white letters on the western front of the Adia Library. His donation was used for the construction of that building. In addition, Olcott had the organization of the Cuban Theosophical Movement on his agenda. To achieve his goals, he convinced Cuban Theosophical leaders to work hard to organize a kind of regional headquarters. It served as a platform for the predominance of the institution in Latin America. In this stage that takes place between 1894 and 1904, the growth of lodges and members is evident. In 1901, there were 10 members of the Theosophical Society grouped in a lodge. In 1902, 38 members grouped in three lodges. In 1903, 64 members grouped in five lodges. In December 1904, after Olcott's successful visit to Cuba, there were 173 members grouped in five lodges. Havana was the strongest nucleus with three duly constituted lodges. Although the growth of the institution in Cuba was not massive, the impact of theosophy at the time manifests itself in two aspects. Firstly, in the production and distribution of theosophical material on the island, and then towards the spiritual since it inserts a new spirituality of an esoteric nature that will group among its ranks renowned intellectuals and patriots, who in turn will influence the Cuban literary, cultural, social, political, and spiritual media, becoming in turn one of the new spiritual alternatives for the political, social, intellectual elites and the professional sector of the nation. Taking into account the aforementioned analyses, we can conclude that between 1894 and 1904, the foundations of the Cuban Theosophical Movement were laid, influenced by the International Theosophical Directive and by the feelings of freedom prevailing in Cuba since the end of Spanish rule. Next, I will talk about the second stage of the Cuban Theosophical Movement and its repercussion in the region. This period runs between 1905 and 1926, a period in which it is possible to give an institutional framework to theosophy, conjugating this fact with the founding of the Cuban section in 1905. The Cuban section of the Theosophical Society, a path towards the institutionalization of theosophy. The founding of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society is a significant event that marks the beginning of this new stage in the history of the Theosophical Movement in Latin America, since its founding was a decisive element in institutional growth in the Americas. The formation of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society responded to a variety of causes. The first responds to the need of the International Directive of the Theosophical Society to bring together all the theosophical lodges that emerged in the Central America 
and the Caribbean under a strong directive, which was strategically located in the Central America and Caribbean space. In addition, it was sought to constitute a theosophical center, which would act as a kind of regional headquarters without the tortuous dependence of the European and North American theosophical centers. This element is due to the organizational criteria of Olcott, who recognized the cultural, social, and linguistic particularities of the Central American and Caribbean countries, identifying a supposed common Latino race in the region. This opinion of the president of the International Theosophical Society has been manifesting itself since the end of the 19th century, reliably reflected in the letter of November 16, 1899 to Alexander Fullerton, Secretary General of the American Section of the Theosophical Society. In this letter, Olcott explained to Fullerton how wrong Mr. Wright's approach was, alleging that the American Section of the Theosophical Society absorbed the Theosophical Lodges of South America. Olcott asserts that the linguistic and cultural differences between both hemispheres would be disadvantageous for the development of the Theosophical Society in the region. At Olcott's request, this letter was published in the official magazine of the American section, The Path, and in the Spanish Theosophical magazine, Sofia magazine, of February 1900, making it clear that the American section of the Theosophical Society has no jurisdiction over the theosophical branches of South America. In addition, the analysis made to these letters found in the archive of Cuban section of the Theosophical Society between Henry Steele Olcott and Jose Maria Maso Junkus, they owe the firm disposition of the board of the Theosophical Society to establish in South America a theosophical bastion that was managed by the natives themselves. To achieve this founding goal, H.S. Olcott looked for a man totally committed to the cause who was completely trusted and located in the region of interest. This man of confidence was found by Henry Steele Olcott in the person of Jose Maria Maso Juncosa, president of the Annie Besant Lodge and leader of the Havana Theosophical Nucleus. He would become the first general secretary of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society. For the reasons mentioned above, Olcott decided to group the Theosophical Lodges, Annie Besant, Concordia, H.S. Olcott of Havana, the Sofia Lodge of Cienfuegos, the Fraternidad de Banz Lodge, the Bacti Gayan Lodge of Santi Spiritus, and the Viria Lodge of San Jose, Costa Rica, in a regional unit, whose headquarters would be strategically located in Havana, due to the development of the institution on the island and its valuable geopolitical position. In this way, on February 7th, 1905, the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society was officially founded, although the opening ceremony was held on June 4th of the same year at the home of Jose Maria Maso Juncosa. The Cuban section of the Theosophical Society was born then as an autonomous body in accordance with the general rules of the Theosophical Society and was made up of all the branches or lodges constituted and to be constituted in the territory between the north of the Amazon River and the Rio Grande, border of the territory of Mexico with the United States. Converting the newly born section into an international institution, it will be destined to direct and administer the affairs of the Theosophical Association in the Central American and Caribbean geographic area. The associative dynamics and the arduous propaganda campaign carried out by the Cuban Theosophical Group in the period 1905 to 1908 favored the insertion of theosophy in the main Cuban cities. At the same time, the Theosophical Lodges were inserted in Mexico and Puerto Rico achieving in this chronological framework the foundation of 21 Theosophical Lodges, 11 in Cuba, Progreso Andanes, Cria, H.P. Blavatsky, Jesus, Lutz de Maceo, Lotto Blanco, Estrella de Lutz, H.S. Olcott, Lutz de Oriente in Santiago de Cuba, Humility in Granma and Dharma in Matanzas, eight in Mexico, Yamavat, Alpha y Omega, Yoshua in Coahuila, 
Lotto, Aura Vidya in Mexico City, Yoga and Aria Varda in Monterrey, and two in Puerto Rico, Ananda in Ponce and Helen P. Blavatsky in Aguadilla. This Theosophical Emergent led to the registration of 611 members to the Theosophical ranks of the Cuban section. Of this membership only remained active at the end of the period that goes from 1905 to 1908, 48.2%, concluding sub-period A on June 26, 1908, with the death of Secretary General of the Cuban section, Jose Maria Maso Juncosa, who was the central figure for this period. It must be pointed out that Maso's death did not stop the process of institutionalization of the Cuban section and the establishment of the Theosophical Esoteric Networks in the region. Rather, it opened the way for a new generation of Theosophists who would promote with more strength and from new platforms, the incipient regional Theosophical movement. One of the most prominent Theosophists in that period that followed the previous one that elapses between 1908 and 1926 is the intellectual of military training, Rafael de Alvear y San Just, who was elected Secretary General of the Cuban section in 1908 after the death of José María Maso Juncosa. It is necessary to highlight that despite the establishment of the Cuban section with a primary communications network, the definitive push for the creation of the Theosophical networks and the juxtaposition of complementary esoteric networks will be given by Rafael de Alvear and Saint Just. This personality, in order to reaffirm his position as leader of the institution after Maso's death, launched a series of strategies to consolidate and expand theosophy in the region. Thus, the stage from 1908 to 1926 was one of the fastest growing and most visible of the Theosophical Society in the region. This effect of growth and visibility of theosophy in the region is essentially due to two factors. The first is external and constitutes the historical context in which the institution develops. The second has more to do with the actions of the institution and the mechanisms which Albiar implemented to strengthen the consolidation process of the institution in Cuba and in the sectional territory. Albiar first encourages the exchange and fellowship between the lodges and theosophical centers with the rest of the members of the section. This fact is evident in the action of publishing in the Theosophical Magazine of October 1908 an official part that made at the disposal of all subscribers of said magazine, the addresses of the presidents and secretaries of all the lodges that at that time formed part of the Cuban section. In addition, the said part specified that the only legitimate and true representative of the Theosophical Society in Cuba, Central America and the Caribbean and the rest of the sectional area was the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society, which has its office in the Cuban capital. This situation shows how Havana Theosophists, aware of the work carried out, felt as the promoters of Theosophy in the Caribbean, Central America, and a large part of South America. Next, the central directive of the section encouraged the import and export of Theosophical esoteric literature to and from Havana. This material flowed uninterruptedly from various centers, including Barcelona, Madrid, California, and Madras. This literature reached Havana, where it was classified and distributed to the Theosophical and Esoteric Regional Groups. A convincing example of the events mentioned above is the importation of the magazine, The Herald of Star of the Order of the Eastern Star, and the bulletin, The Link, of the Esoteric School of Theosophy, imported from India and the United States. The above mentioned magazines were sent to the main leaders of the institution in Cuba, Central America, the Caribbean, and the rest of the sectional territory, of course, after Albia's management. Although the link newsletter was reserved in nature, only accessible to members of the Esoteric School of Theosophy. Along with it came an abundant group of theosophical magazines, among which are The Theosophist, The Path, Le Lotus Bleu, 
and Sofia. In addition, the Cuban Theosophical Review was distributed through subscriptions and exchanges throughout the sectional territory and to the most important theosophical centers of the world. All the literature mentioned above, along with the works of Blavatsky, Olcott, Annie Besant, Ledbeta, the poems of Rabindranath Tagore, the book at the feet of the teacher by the Theosophical Messiah Krishnamurti and the writings of Jose Marti Perez. They became reference literature of mandatory consultation for the main members of these networks that are linked with the development of the Cuban section between 1912 and 1926. This situation led Havana to become the epicenter of the Theosophical Society in the region and one of the largest reception and distribution centers for theosophical esoteric literature in Latin America. In its evolution, the theosophical esoteric networks that emerged with the founding of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society influenced much of the esoteric and occult world of Latin America, getting to establish connections with the most important theosophical, esoteric and occult centers of Latin America, the United States, Europe, and Asia. This affirmation is corroborated when reviewing the, the abundant river of institutional and private correspondence that circulated between the leadership of the Cuban section and the main heads of the international theosophical movement. In this correspondence, there are numerous examples of the management carried out by Cuban theosophists as intermediaries and facilitators between the main world theosophical centers and the Central American Caribbean region, including Mexico, Colombia, and Venezuela. For this reason, it is reiterated that the networks are theosophical esoteric and in their intellectual extensions, since the regional theosophical leaders used the existing connections between the theosophical lodges and the Cuban section to introduce the complementary esoteric associations that arise later or reach the region belatedly, such as the Order of the Eastern Star, among others. The results obtained in the investigative process supported by the aforementioned sources not only quantify the presence of the theosophical movement in Cuba, Central America, and the Caribbean, at the same time, they constitute indicators of a more general theosophical movement that extends and takes root in Latin America, which in turn belonged to a global theosophical network. As conclusion, 107 theosophical lodges, of which 50% were located in the Cuban space, were founded between 1901 and 1926 in Central America, the Caribbean, and the rest of the area conferred to the Cuban section. In addition to the 14,075 members registered by the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society from its foundation in 1905 to June 1926, 59% were located in Cuban territory, turning the island into a fundamental bulwark of theosophy and the esoteric associations derived from it in the region. It is enlightening to note that this section began its operation in 1905 with 110 active members affiliated with seven lodges distributed between Cuba and Costa Rica, concluding the period studied in June 1926 with 862 active members affiliated with 33 lodges distributed in Cuba, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Honduras, and Colombia. In addition, the Cuban section branched out, giving rise to two daughter sections, the Mexican section of the Theosophical Society, founded between late 1919 and early 1920 under the sponsorship of Cuban theosophical leaders and the Puerto Rico section of the Theosophical Society, which was organized in 1925 in the same condition. Although the repercussion of theosophy in the region is not directed towards the numerical proliferation of lodges and members, rather its repercussion is manifested in the interconnections that the regional theosophists are forming, thus beginning to outline an incipient regional theosophical network that will be conjugated in later decades. Equally important is that theosophy managed to position itself in the region 
as a spiritual, cultural, and philosophical alternative, thus expanding its own mentality. In addition, it opens the Central American and Caribbean region to new spaces of sociability among the intellectual, social, and political elites, and among the professional sector of the region, converting the Theosophical Lodges and centers into true forums for social, cultural, philosophical, artistic, scientific, esoteric, and theosophical, and in some cases, political debates. In this way, Theosophical Lodges in their projection towards society become important cultural, social, philosophical, and philanthropic nuclei, and will contribute to the evolution of Latin America thought in the first decades of the 20th century. This situation is understandable when analyzing the social component of the institution's membership in the region. Among its standing members, there were renowned intellectuals, pedagogues, philosophers, artists, and politicians. Although the period studied ends in June 1926, with the resignation of Rafael de Alvear and Saint Just as Secretary General of the Cuban section of the Theosophical Society, the splendor of the institution continued with its ups and downs in subsequent decades. As conclusion, the importance of this work lies fundamentally in the possibility to calibrate the dimensions reached by the institutionalizing process of theosophy in Cuba and its repercussion on the development and consolidation of the Central American and Caribbean theosophical movement in this way shedding light on the role of the Cuban section in the articulating process of theosophy in the region. <laughs>